100 yards north of the front door under a dead wood pile, there's a hatch. Open it and you'll see what real evil looks like. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 serial killers on Dexter. Hello, Dexter Morgan. For this list, we're looking at the most dangerous and intriguing murderers on this crime drama series. A spoiler alert is in effect. Which serial killer do you think made Dexter such a chilling show to follow? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Ken Olsen When Dexter's antics as the Bay Harbor Butcher become known to the general public, some Miami citizens appreciate his efforts. Ken Olsen is among the budding serial killers who thinks he's paying tribute to Dexter's vigilantism. I take out criminals. You mean you try pitifully? No, no, that was just the last one. He got away. I, th I should have never made it personal. You've killed others. However, Olsen twists Dexter's code, taking the lives of the people whose deaths would play to his benefit, which greatly offends Dexter. Olsen stands as proof that vigilantism through killing is never the right way, something that even Dexter has to begrudgingly admit after he captures Olsen. You attacked those people because you wanted to. Yeah, but you inspired me. I didn't. With your principles. They're not my principles. Of course they are. Don't tell me who I am. With a crude manner of disposing of his victims, Olsen is unsuccessful in his hopes to become a glorified serial killer, and is, ironically, slain by the man he idolized. Number 19. Oleg Mikic While not a person who kills for personal joy, Oleg Mikic has a death count that rivals many prolific serial killers. I suppose we can talk about this. I've already accepted the contract. What's done is done. Right then. We'll see you soon. Confirmed to have assassinated at least 16 victims, he's hired by the Koshka Brotherhood to finish off Isaac Sirko. Oleg is extremely precise with a sniper rifle, leaving his targets afraid to step outside. What I need is the element of surprise. And that, Dexter, is you. You're scared. Circo forces Dexter to kill the unsuspecting Oleg at his behest, which brings an end to this hitman's career. We get an idea of how he conducts his killings at a shooting range before Dexter surprises him, proving that nobody can see Dexter coming. Number 18. Joe Jensen, aka The Phantom Arsonist Dexter is notable for the way it carves out backstories for killers to explain why they became that way. Responsible for the deaths of 10 victims, Joe Jensen's M.O. primarily involves arson. This void is the same thing that happened with the first car victim. We have a phantom. His method stems from a childhood event where a friend convinced him to set fire to their school gym, which ended up claiming his friend's life. While that in no way excuses Jensen's part in slaying innocent people, it's something that Dexter seems to understand. You're the one who's burning people alive. You can't blame it on something that happened to you when you were a kid. You're not a kid anymore. It's time for you to take responsibility. After he catches Jensen following another round of the latter's crimes, Dexter nearly kills him until he learns Jensen's backstory. Ultimately, Jensen is proof that crime is best dealt with by the law, and that there is more to monsters than meets the eye. Number 17. A.J. Yates Once a patient of Dr. Evelyn Vogel, who created the code that Harry teaches Dexter, Yates is a psychopath whose M.O. involves capturing women and hurting their feet. The feet remind him of his abusive mother, whose feet he'd watch as he hid under the bed. You'd find a safe place under the bed. She'd look for you, raging, and you'd curl up under there, looking out, waiting. The intrigue surrounding Yates deepens when he's suspected of being the brain surgeon, season eight's mysterious antagonist. Yates proves to be a cunning foe, tracing Dexter back to Dr. Vogel and intending to eliminate her. We get insight into how his mind works when Vogel uses his fears against him. Albert, stop it! Don't call me that. Only my mother called me that. Stop that, Albert, now! Eventually, Yates's obsession with feet proves to be his undoing as he fails to anticipate Dexter's fatal attack. Number 16. Little Chino 
Although Little Chino only kills people in his role as a gang enforcer, we have to agree that chopping up people with a machete pretty much qualifies him as a serial killer. Looking for me regarding this tragedy. You bet your ass we are. The victim was the mother of one of your compadres who we know you killed. But can't prove. Chino is confirmed to have slain at least 10 people, which he thinks is part of business. He's a target of Dexter because he escapes the law through a lack of evidence, and his dangerous lifestyle is the perfect cover for a potential disappearance. Chino deserves special mention for being the greatest physical threat Dexter ever faces, with the massive Chino even escaping the kill table through sheer strength. His fearful persona is felt by Dexter as well, who has to rethink his strategy in order to recapture Chino and finally end him. It was simple, really. All I had to do was put myself into the mind of a killer. Hardly a stretch. It was only a matter of time before little Chino went after Joey Nunez for snitching him out. Number 15. Lumen Pierce Dexter is reluctant to trust anyone with a secret after his former best friend Miguel betrays him. However, Lumen becomes an accomplice after he rescues her from the Barrel Girl gang. Due to the trauma of her captivity, Lumen develops her own dark passenger and becomes a killer who targets her former captors. But you call me to clean up after you. I didn't know what to do with the body. I'll leave this. Just go if you want to go. Go. You're, I'm responsible for you. Everything you do leads right back to me. I didn't think it would be so hard to kill someone. Her methods are the same as Dexter, as the two eliminate their victims in tandem. Lumen technically has a perfect track record since she never gets caught, but is different to Dexter because she successfully lets go of her need to kill. Lumen realizes she only needed to gain justice and doesn't need to carry that burden after the gang's demise. I could tell it was gone. I don't feel it anymore. The need. Number 14. The Castillos Jorge and Valerie Castillo were a couple who charged Cubans extremely high prices to smuggle them into the United States. Their dark secret is that they drown people who can't afford their lofty rates. Even Dexter is repelled at the large kill count the Castillos rack up. This must be where Castillo locks them up. But if he's killing them when they can't pay, he's not doing it here. So where are they? What's unique about the couple is that they're a team through and through, sharing the same mindset. Dexter is intrigued and ends up learning about juggling a killer's lifestyle with a personal one. You're like me. You make it work. How? The we same want the thing. same same life. We both, we, we want the same thing. Same life. <laughs> You share the same dream. Although the Castillos were undoubtedly terrible people for the lives they took, they indirectly impart some much needed advice to Dexter in their final moments. Number 13, the Fuentes brothers. This pair of brothers took robbing people to brutal lengths. Their MO was to extort people to withdraw money from an ATM before killing them with a machete. Let him go. <laughs> you let him go. Everybody clear? Report in. He is clear. Clear. These newfound funds were then used to pay for VIP service at a club. For once, the brothers have nothing to do with Dexter, posing a threat to Debra instead, and thus bringing a different kind of tension. Carlos Fuentes is the primary aggressor, being the one to carry out the machete-based killings. Stop right there, down the ground, police, drop the gun! Drop the gun, drop the gun! Drop the gun now! Are you again? You should walk away before this thing gets more than this little cut. Although Carlos is shot and killed by Debra, Marco is a rare killer who gets away with it, as he remains at large. Number 12. Nurse Mary Mary is long gone from the world by the time the series begins because she's Dexter's very first victim. A nurse who believes she is freeing her patients from pain when she kills them, she comes close to taking the life of Harry Morgan, who authorizes Dexter to claim Mary's. Wait. What is it, honey? He doesn't want the shot. Your father's very sick. He's in a lot of pain. He needs a shot. No, I want pain. He wants pain. Mary is significant for the way the show encourages Dexter's vigilantism through her, as she takes the lives of her patients by poisoning them, and it's implied she's done so for many years. Her persona is horrific considering how easily it could happen in real life, which is why Dexter's kill feels justified. Are you trapped behind the couch again, Mr. Tinker Stinker? The nurse was my first playmate. 
and I'll always be grateful to her for opening up so many magnificent new doors for me. Her death remains her biggest contribution, putting Dexter on the path to becoming the Bay Harbor Butcher. Number 11. Ray Speltzer, aka the Minotaur Slayer. There aren't many killers who've scared Dexter into retreating, which places Ray Speltzer in elite company. However, I do run if there's a bull coming after me with an axe. A sick-minded individual who seduces and kidnaps women, Speltzer's M.O. is to dress up as a minotaur and force his victims into a maze of his own design. It's a way for him to assert his dominance, and he concocts elaborate games for his twisted pleasure. Speltzer even manages to get Dexter trapped in his lair. The Minotaur Killer is the kind of villain that makes Dexter so compelling, as we watch the protagonist use his wits to turn the tables. I'm gonna kill you. That would be a twist. Not one that's gonna happen tonight. Number 10, Kurt Caldwell, AKA the Runaway Killer. You're the one behind bars. You don't have any power, not anymore. What this, this situation, is temporary. I saw what you are. Kurt Caldwell functions as the runaway killer for 25 years without stirring suspicion. A shrewd tactician who poses as a model member of the community, Kurt is a reflection of what Dexter could have become. Much like Dexter, Kurt convinces himself he's on some altruistic mission as he traps and eliminates runaway women, thinking he's saving them from the outside world. I saved them. They're just runaways. Do you have any idea the trauma that they were going to go through? He lacks that distinct edge that other serial killers on the series do, but Kurt has a devious mind, targeting Dexter's son to antagonize him and successfully outing him as his son Matt's killer. Number 9. The Barrel Girl Gang The main antagonists of the fifth season, this gang is responsible for the killings of at least a dozen women. There's only one actual killer, with member Boyd Fowler the one who disposes of the victims by sealing them in barrels. This is what was going to happen to you. Every one of these barrels has a body in it. Boyd preserved them in formaldehyde so he could come and visit. However, each man is responsible for psychologically destroying the women they capture, following the commands of their leader, Jordan Chase. The show keeps up the mystery by revealing the members of the group one by one, as their final victim, Lumen, recalls all the men involved. You should thank me. <laughs> That's not what's gonna happen. I watched you so carefully the last time you were here. You used to just tower and cry! Their actions are so heinous that it's actually one of the few times when Dexter is easily the good guy in the conflict, as not even a serial killer of his level can comprehend such violence against women. Number 8. Isaac Serco, aka The Wolf Part of the Koshka Brotherhood crime organization, Isaac Serco's primary goal in the series is to execute Dexter. While not a serial killer in the general sense, his kill count is so great that he qualifies as one. I'm gonna put your eyes out. Now the trick is to keep from drilling into your brain. Not having any qualms with doling out painful deaths, Circo's ruthlessness extends to Dexter after the latter kills his lover Victor. I'm trying to decide if I should live or die because of what I did to him. He was my life! But still, you sent him to Miami. He doesn't have any specific M.O., but promises a painful retribution to Dexter that the titular character takes very seriously. Tellingly, the pair have a strange bond over their killer's instincts, almost becoming friends after Circo is betrayed by his own syndicate. By Circo's own admission, he could have understood Dexter's need to kill had circumstances been different, as he easily accepts Dexter's dark truth. Watching everybody else pretending we're just like them, but knowing we're not. Best we can hope for is to find a place where we don't have to pretend. Number 7. Hannah McKay, aka The Passionate Poisoner Even though she doesn't have any inherent need to kill, Hannah has a pretty long list of victims she's poisoned. He's not gonna solve anything, he's just gonna come back. Well, I don't see any other option. When other people have threatened you, you found other options. Always falling in with the wrong romantic partners, Hannah sees killing as her way out of trouble, which, weirdly enough, becomes irresistible to Dexter. 
Hannah might just be more dangerous than the titular character, having no issues with hurting whoever threatens her, going so far as to poison Dexter's sister. I completely free you up to kill Deb? No. I'm gonna spend the rest of my life behind bars. You left me no choice. You had a choice. You were supposed to choose me. She's my sister. Her mysteriousness is such that Dexter becomes enamored with her, unable to honor his code even though she qualifies. Hannah has perhaps the best survival skills of any killer in the series, capable of escaping with her freedom each and every time to remain one of the few characters who don't answer for their crimes. Number 6. Travis Marshall, aka The Doomsday Killer Characters like Travis Marshall demonstrate the creative ways the show introduces killers with different codes. A disturbed individual, he becomes convinced that he's on a divine mission to bring on the apocalypse and completes many killings as signs of the end of the world. This was how it was always meant to be. I will wait on a pillar of light for God's return and you'll burn an eternal hellfire. Interestingly, he has a version of the Dark Passenger as well, which parallels Dexter's own, as Travis imagines his mentor, Professor James Geller, justifying his heinous actions. He's also the first to command a following, with Travis even having his own minions to do his dirty work. What are you gonna do? I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to kill her, Beth. Oh! As a villain, he at first baffles Dexter, who has to come to terms with the concept of faith to understand how the Doomsday Killer's mind works. Number 5. George King, aka The Skinner Although he has virtually no connection to Dexter, The Skinner is the main serial killer antagonist of the third season. His M.O. stays true to his title, as King meticulously skins his victims. He uses flimsy justifications to conduct his torturing ways, claiming he's eliminating the people linked to Freebo, the man who owes him money. By the way, no, this is not a trap. Oye, if I wanted you in jail, I wouldn't have let you loose in the first place, okay? Now you believe this man knows where Freebo is? King's wave of violence shakes things up for Miami Metro, and he outwits them numerous times. His tactics are so cunning that he even manages to capture Dexter himself. This is the part where my fear is supposed to build. I know his M.O. by heart. But you're not afraid. Of course, he isn't quite in the elite level of serial killers, since he ultimately loses handily to Dexter and dies as a result. Number 4. Oliver Saxon, aka The Brain Surgeon He doesn't show up in person for the majority of the season, but that is exactly what makes The Brain Surgeon so scary. The son of Dr. Vogel, he lurks in the shadows, antagonizing his mother by sending pieces of his victim's brains to her. He comes to see Dexter as a pseudo-sibling because of his relationship with Evelyn, and decides to eliminate both. Hello, Dexter. What do you want? Where are you? Don't move. I want to show you something. Don't touch her. Mother chose the wrong son. Again. Saxon is the ultimate killer without mercy, gleefully taking lives in gruesome ways while feeling no remorse. His level of cunning is such that he hides in plain sight, using different identities to blend in. Saxon completely destroys Dexter's life, taking down Dr. Vogel, Dexter's protege Zack, and Deborah. In one sharp moment, you took away this foolish dream that I could have a happy life. Is that why you're here? Tell me all this. Number 3. Brian Moser aka the Ice Truck Killer. The Ice Truck Killer could have killed Dexter any time he wanted, but chooses not to since they're brothers. Brian and Dexter were separated as children, and the former remembers his younger sibling. You remember now? Bryony. You always had trouble saying Brian. I have a brother. A real brother. Born in blood, Brian's M.O. is to drain his victims' refrigerated body parts of their blood and then leave them in public areas. He plays a cat-and-mouse game with Dexter to prove they're connected, which brings a surprisingly humane aspect to his personality. Brian can feel true brotherly love and hopes that he and Dexter can become a serial killer duo. You've been away from your family since you were three. 
But I'm here now. I can help you. We can take this journey together. His proficiency arguably surpasses Dexter's, who only kills Brian to prevent him from harming Deborah. Number 2. Arthur Mitchell, aka the Trinity Killer. With a decades-long criminal career and a victim count of at least 279, Arthur Mitchell is a prolific killer. But he hides his double life using his wife and children and his role in his community. Did you say you were thankful for me, Jonah? What's that? I did not say I was thankful for you. Because I'm not. His M.O. involves killing four victims who represent himself as a boy his sister, his mother, and his father. Arthur's tortured childhood is responsible for this method, although Dexter realizes he genuinely enjoys the brutality he leaves in his wake. In the end, it takes another serial killer the caliber of Dexter to bring him down. Hello, Arthur Mitchell. <laughs> However, Arthur gets the last laugh by slaying Dexter's wife beforehand as his final act of evil. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dexter Morgan, aka The Bay Harbor Butcher There is no killer as meticulous and devious as Dexter, who's a nightmare for any other murderers out there. Miami Metro Homicide employs the greatest killer to have ever lived without realizing it, as Dexter uses his position to hunt for victims. Why are you doing this? You want the long version that could take a couple hours? Short version. Because I have to. Because I need control. Dubbed the Bay Harbor Butcher for the way he disposed of his victims underwater, Dexter's dark passenger and kill code are unparalleled. He's responsible for slaying the most feared villains in the series, although Dexter's true intention is to satiate his need to kill. Few ever doubt the wholesome mask Dexter puts on to fit in, and those who do end up regretting it. It's fitting, then, that Dexter ultimately decides his own fate in the end. I've never really felt love. Real love. Until now. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.